Hi, this is Brian. I'm just going to try something new uh, and we'll see if this idea takes off. Um, one idea that, that I like to do is a list of stock tickers and I'm using stockcharts.com, a uh, free version where you can save a number of tickers and get these charts that are, well, it looks like about a six month time frame. And so you can just put a list of tickers for, for different sectors, or these, in this case, these are ETFs. And we had a really market moving day today. So I'm just trying this out for the first time to see how this platform works uh, to record this with Loom. Uh, what's nice is that you can put up a, a screen, you can use different tabs and just talk through it. And then another tool that I use is Perplexity. And on other videos I've tried uh, looking up chats and, and performing that in real time with some analysis. So that might be another thing that would work well, uh, especially for company specific evaluation where you need to look up company results. Um, Perplexity is also pretty good about getting you specifics about the ETFs, the expenses, their top holdings. I've used it to look at overlap between ETFs, but that's a little bit of a digression and maybe some future topics. The purpose of this video is simply just to look at these post-election day results in a broad spectrum of ETFs that I follow. This is a list that I have bookmarked. So one of the nice things about stockcharts.com, if you use this thing, it's called Candle Glance is the name of the, the particular page. It allows you to input all of these tickers and it's bookmarkable. So you can go back to it and just uh, use it as a, as a link. Makes it real nice if you want to update, check it periodically. I don't look at it every day, but for longer term trends, it's kind of nice to revisit. Um, and today we had huge market news, so I thought it was a particularly good day to visit. So why don't we just walk through the charts and I'll just give some thoughts about each one of these. Um, the first one I have is TLT. This is the long term treasury ETF, uh, pretty well known. I don't think this got much discussion at all today with all of the focus on the equity rally. Uh, the fact that you have this 2.74% sell off in TLT, that's pretty ominous. I didn't look it up in terms of standard deviations, but it's got to be at least a two standard deviation move, probably a three. Uh, and it's all, it, was, it was down 3% for a part of the day. And so the candlestick chart here shows I mean, really, it's just bringing us down to where we were in August. So, I mean, we don't want to read too much into it. That's just taking us back three months in terms of price. But it does look like a bit of a trend reversal. We're also quite oversold. Another comment is that the bonds have been selling off even before the election. So this is this is recorded the day after the U.S. presidential election. But if you look, even in September is when this peaked, right around that Fed meeting when they lowered the rates. That's when bonds started selling off. At the time, they were saying, well, it's about the Fed. Maybe that was about the election. And maybe that was already forecasting whatever it's forecasting. I mean, some people are saying we're going to get inflation from Trump policies, uh, from huge budget deficits, things like that. I can't tell you why it's selling off, but it look, this trend really actually started back in September, two full months ago, uh, but it really accelerated today. So is that a washout and then we're due for a rebound? Possibly, or possibly there's a longer term message about the economy being sent here. And, and this is actually a, a true trend reversal that'll continue. I don't think this is getting talked about nearly enough. I mean, one just, real example of the interest rates. Imagine somebody shopping for a home and about to buy one, but they hadn't yet locked in their interest rates. I didn't look at the mortgage rates to see, based on this TLT move, they probably rose at least a quarter point and maybe more than that. So in a big enough house, that could be, that could be hundreds of dollars a month of real money right there if somebody didn't have an interest rate lock, if, if this is the case. Um, I didn't look to see if in, if mortgage rates followed it, but usually they follow the 10 year, which is right in here with this, the CTF, you know, closely tracking. So, but looking at the stochastics and the MACD there, 
maybe it's due for a reversal. If you if you if you'd like to play a bounce, this is probably a good level to buy T TLT. Okay, enough said on that one. And the one that is getting the news, this SPY, the S&P 500, you see it, it's a huge gap up there. You, if you're not seeing it on the chart, I mean, it rose, it, it bounced right off the, that moving average, which is that, is that the 200 day or 50 day, whatever it is, it bounced off of it. Um, it's been, that was a pretty good indicator. If you follow moving averages, that would have been a great buy signal. Now you've got... Now, however, what, what do you do now? Because is that an island reversal where it's just going to be sitting out there and no follow through? Or, or uh, I would say that the odds probably favor that. I don't think you see long term changes, you know, with a huge gap up of 2.5 percent to a record high. I don't think you just get a continuation of that trend like as a new bull extension of the bull market. I'd say if anything, that, that look, that's quite a gap. And that looks like a gap that gets filled. Now, maybe it'll bounce off the moving average again, but I think, so I think the S and P 500 might be a short here, uh, but maybe we'll get a follow through day tomorrow. So maybe the, maybe there's a better setup, but I, for sure, if you're doing short term, I think you can probably short this one buy it back lower i do think long term i mean unless we have a recession we probably it probably is a favorable trend i don't why i don't know why you'd buy a gap like that though uh, you missed your chance would have been a great move yesterday morning <laughs> before the election um that would have been the time to do that one and you could have you could have made quite a gain on that okay uh speed it up for some of these others i mean those are the two that are closest to the u.s markets efa this is uh large cap, large country type ETF. So it sold off one and a half percent and it was down much more than that earlier in the morning. I mean, down more than 2%, two percent, two and a half percent. So um, this would have been a good buy. I mean, if you're just looking for a classic spread convergence, it would have been short S&P 500 by XUS, large caps. Because um, when I saw it open this morning, you had U.S. large caps up two and a half percent, and you had XUS was down two and a half percent. That's a five percent delta right there. Unless you think that's a real trend change and that's not going to reverse, um, I look at it much more as like an emotional rally to to fade and capture. So I, there was about a five percent spread. If you had shorted U.S. large cap, bought XUS. There's a 5% delta right there, and you got to think at least half of that's going to converge when, once the emotions cool down after the selection. I mean, it has to be. Like, how can the rest of the world be that much worse off, but the U.S. market's going to do great? Whether it's because of tariffs or whatever the news is driving it, it, it can't be that good for the U.S., but bad for the rest of the world. Like, we got one global economy here, so that would have been a good spread convergence trade. VWO, this is emerging markets. This one really took it off, uh, took it on the chin this morning. This was down a solid 3% on the open this morning. And as you look, it closed down 0.95%. So, so this was an, if you're, if you're doing day trading like this, you could have picked up 2% on this just by buying it at the open and selling it at the close. You would have picked, you would have picked up 2%. Um, Pretty good for a one day move. Same thing applies here, like shorting S&P, buying emerging markets. And look at the setup. Like after today's sell off on this VWO, we're, we're right at the moving average. Uh, that's actually looks like a good buy setup there. So while the this S&P looks like an island reversal to fade in short, this emerging market looks like it might actually be a good buy now. And I definitely bought this morning. I mean, I, I bought a lot. I bought this in size. When I saw it down 3%, I said, there's just no way the rest of the world's this worse off because of Trump. And yet the U.S. is going to skyrocket. You can't, they're mutually exclusive at some, at some level. Okay, moving on. GLD, this is gold ETF. Sold off pretty hard, down, closed down 3%. This made no sense. Bitcoin rallied big time as an alternative asset 
hit an all-time high today, actually. Gold, as you see on the chart, gold's been having a, a great six months. I mean, hitting records, doing great, and then sells off 3% today. Why? I mean, other things are saying we're going to have inflation, like the TLT, that's sell-off. Bitcoin's going up. That's like saying we're going to have inflation. Gold itself has been one of the best asset classes this year. And you you want me to believe suddenly it deserves a 3% sell-off? Like, why wouldn't it participate with everything else? This one made no sense at all. And again, look at the moving average. That's a setup. It's it's approaching that, that moving average line there. Uh, that's a buy. Now, if it violates it and keeps going down, that could be your trend change. But I would say right now that trend is intact and we are at a major support level if it holds. So I was I was buying GLD today. Actually, the one I buy, it's not in this chart. It's AAAU. Same thing. It has a, lo a lower expense ratio. Uh, trades at a lower dollar amount, too. It does not have options, however. If you're an options trader, GLD is is the one to go to for that. The AAAU does not have options. Uh, gold looks like might be a buy based on this. Another one, so FREL, this is a real estate ETF. You might know the more popular VNQ, the Vanguard one. This is the Fidelity one. Uh, I look at both. I, I tend to buy VNQ in my Vanguard account. Uh, so this is, these are REITs, real estate trusts. They sold off hard. They were down 2%. They were down more than that, like 2.5% most of the day. It makes no sense. So we're going to have inflation. Equities are great for U.S. Like buy U.S. equities because companies are going to do great. Yet we're going to have inflation, so sell the bonds. Where did where do real where does real estate fit in that? I mean, it has bond like characteristics, but I thought the economy is going to do great. And doesn't real estate do well? Then this one makes no sense. Uh, the chart's not quite as favorable. We're already underneath the moving averages, so. If you're looking at that, that could indicate a trend reversal and maybe these aren't going to do well. So this may not be, I was personally buying it, but now that I'm looking at these moving averages and everything, maybe I won't go and do that in size. But but I'm just pointing out that uh, some, of the, some of this euphoria rally from the Trump victory doesn't really add up. That's all I'm really trying to point out. Like... Um, how do you have real estate down 2%, but equities are up more than 2%. Small caps are up like 5%. So it's like a risk on rally. Oh, but don't buy real estate. How does real estate not do well if, if everything else is going to do well? Uh, I thought it was a buy, but it's not the best chart. VNQI. This one doesn't get followed much at all. This is just the international real estate. At Vanguard, so it's 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 a VNQ, but the international version. So it's a lot less liquid. You know, the, these REITs don't trade as much as the U.S. ones. Uh, I think the valuations aren't as high either. So I think it's actually a better deal, higher dividend yield, more volatility. And so we saw that today. That it was down two percent at the close. It was down more than that. It was down more like three percent intraday. I bought it. This chart doesn't look great. It's just like the U.S. real estate one I just talked about. It's it's below the moving averages. That's not what you want to see. So I bought some, but I didn't go all into it. These these REITs these are good for taxable accounts. I mean, sorry, uh, tax deferred, tax non taxed accounts. Um, their dividends don't usually get the favorable treatment of other dividends, so they're at a higher rate. And they're throwing off a lot of dividends. So they're not very tax efficient investments. But I definitely think they have a role in the portfolio. I mean, their correlation's lower than other stocks. It's more like in the 0.6 to 0.65 correlation range, which is pretty good. You can't really get that with other ETFs. Most other ETFs of stocks are going to be like 0.8 and above. So they're really not diversifying you. That's why I like VNQI. That's why I have it in this list. Most people don't know about it. There aren't a lot. There are only a few international REIT ETFs. This is one that probably has the lowest expenses. So I follow it. It's not the best setup chart wise, but this is more of a diversification story. If you don't have exposure to it, 
this might be a good entry. I'm not saying it has the best chart in the world. It's more about if you don't already own it, maybe it's something to consider buying and scaling into. Okay, next one, VWOB. This is a Vanguard. Um, it's the Emerging Market Bond Index ETF. So that's a mouthful. Again, this is one that doesn't get followed. There are not a lot of ETFs that follow emerging market debt. It's not a, not a thing that most people want to be into. And that's exactly why you should look at it. Just for that, that gives it diversification value. That's why it's in my list. So I looked at that. Chart's not great. Bond, like other bonds, this has been in a downturn since the September Fed rate cut. It worsened today, but it didn't do that badly, down 0.3%. It actually outperformed the U.S. bonds. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. I mean, so emerging market stocks were down 2 to 3% in the indices. U.S. debt was down 2 to 3%, but emerging market debt only down 0.3%. Doesn't make much sense. But that speaks to its diversification value. It didn't quite behave like like the other tangential e ETFs. So that's what you look for in a, in a fund. It didn't quite behave like you predicted. So uh, that means it has some for diversification value. Not tax efficient. So this is another good one for a tax deferred retirement type account, which is where I hold it. Um, I picked up a little bit. It was down more earlier in the day, so I picked up a little bit of that. I was basically fading everything. So if it was if it was rallying to the moon, I was selling it, and if it was selling off hard, I was buying it. And it's just a mean reversion type trade based on this euphoria. Like anyway, and finally, last one is VCLT. This is the Vanguard Long Term Corporate Debt ETF. Um, like the other bond ETFs, it's been in a downtrend for two months. It was down, closed down 1.6%. It was down more than that, uh, down more than 2% earlier in the day. So I bought it. Not because it has the best chart set up, just because I was, I was fading everything. Um, so that one's probably a trade. Like if we get a snap back in the bonds, I'll probably sell some of those off. I don't like these charts. I do think we're going to have an inflationary environment. I think that's a big part of what today's moves were about. This, the Trump, you call it the Trump rally, um, inflationary policies, tax cuts, even though we can't even balance the budget, we're cutting taxes. It makes no sense, um, but it does make sense why the bonds would sell off with that. They're forecasting higher inflation because these policies aren't free. You're paying for them somehow. So if you're not going to pay for it in taxes, you're going to do the, the silent tax, the inflation tax. And that's what bonds were telling us today. So I was fading them today, but if, once we get a little snapback, I'm out of them. Because I, I do think what they're telling you is right. I think we're going to have inflation, but there may be a short-term trade here because they look pretty oversold. So that's a little longer than I had planned to make the video. Just trying this out on this platform. I, mean, I don't even expect anyone to watch this, but... Hey, if somebody does, this could turn into a thing. I, I'm not selling a newsletter. This is just sharing my views here and trying out a new software to be real honest. So if somehow anyone stumbles onto this and this, this is a thing, I'm happy to continue it. Like Again, I'm not selling anything. Uh, and uh, I'm more into this just for my own interest. If you do encounter this, I would love to get your comments. First of all, I'd like to know... Uh, what you think I got right, where you think I was wrong, and what you think will happen and turn this into like a real dialogue. And if we can get that going, I'd love to continue this. So uh, yeah, if you if, if <laughs> this is like being published out into the abyss, but if you happen to see it, let me know. I'd be thrilled. Uh, thanks a lot.